I must say, I am uh, terribly proud of this, uh, this shrine. We asked a young artist in New York named Will St. John. He was a very fine portrait artist. And I knew his work uh, indirectly. And we asked him to do this portrait. And uh, the idea, it's a subtle thing. It's not just a, a portrait like of a Renaissance Pope. It's a portrait of a saint, which means someone who's looking out at us, but from heaven, from a different space. He's not sharing in the ordinary kind of joys and sorrows of this world. He's been brought to a new dimension where he's seeing the very face of God. He still is connected to our world, he loves our world, but is looking at it from this transfigured place. So we communicated all that to Will St. John, and I think he did a spectacular job at presenting John Paul precisely in that mode. You see in the, in the portrait a joyfulness, but not an ordinary joyfulness. It's a beatific look. It's someone who's come to full happiness. Look at the light as it plays on that picture. It's not the ordinary light of, of this world, but a light coming from the luminosity of God. Yet he looks at us. He's looking out at us from his heavenly window, if you want. With that kind of beautifully wry or even impish smile, I communicated to, um, to Will St. John that there was something kind of playful about John Paul. And we sent a number of photographs that had that sort of impish smile. And he catches that, but I think in a beautiful way. Uh, it's not just playful in the ordinary sense, but it's as though he has a great secret that he, that he wants us to know. And it's the secret of, of God's life. And he looks out at this chapel, looks out at, I hope, generations of seminarians with that wonderful um, heavenly secret. Now look around the picture, uh, that magnificent frame. We found that in the basement of Cardinal George's uh, house out here. There's a big villa, which actually, Cardinal George doesn't use that often, but um, that frame surrounded a painting that, that Cardinal Mundelein brought back from Europe, probably back in the 1930s. The painting had been taken out and relocated, and then that frame was discarded. It was in the basement of his house. It was discolored, it was broken, it was covered in dust. We found it and thought, but wouldn't that be magnificent as the frame for this John Paul II portrait? So we had it sent out, had it beautifully restored, repaired, and there it is, I think, wonderfully exemplifying that this man is in an elevated space. It's as though he's looking out that window from the heavenly place. So the frame is, I think, in its, in its uh, elaborate design, its, its gold coloring is just magnificent. Also notice on both sides of John Paul, there's like these little doors that swing open, and there are saints depicted there. Now they were there because of the earlier portrait. We don't know exactly why. We're not even entirely sure who all the saints are. But I said, let's keep them. Because John Paul is looking out from his heavenly place, surrounded by his heavenly friends. So there they are. It's the communion of saints, if you want, uh, who I hope will be blessing people in this chapel for the next hundred years.